Hello, my name is Cecilia Pardo. I'm the lead curator for the exhibition Peru, A Journey in Time. And welcome, but this is not my corner. Today, I'm in the conservation studio with this remarkable object called a kipu, which is being currently prepared to be displayed in the show. So what were the kipus and what were they used for? Kipu comes from the word not in Quechua, which is the main language used by the Incas during the Inca Empire. But that language has endured and it's still used and practiced in many uh, highland communities in Peru. So kipu were the main record keeping device in pre-Columbian Andes. It was used and introduced by the Wari culture towards 600 AD, but it was more widely used by the Inca. And I think it was one of the main reasons why they could expand and conquer such a vast territory in such a small time. So the main structure of the kipu consists of a main cord, and then we have pendant cords, which register the information in knots. What the Inca did is they established a decimal system. So we have knots from one to nine, and then we have knots that register the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. For example, in this kipu, the information is registered in different levels. So the position of the units comes here, and the positions of the tens comes here. We now know that not only knots were giving us information, but spaces between the chords also registered information. A chord without a knot was probably registering a zero. And the way the pendant chords are tied to the main chord also registers important information. Also, in some cases, there's a chord that goes up and it summarized all the information recorded in one kipu. By comparing the use of kipus in modern communities, scholars also are trying to decode the different colors that we have in kipus. So for instance, if you have here different colors set up in bands, for example, beige, 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 brown, 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 black, black, black. Apparently that information was related to people, individuals. When the information was recorded like in series, like beige, brown, black, beige, brown, black, they were decoded information on communities, on groups of people. Today, we account for more than 1,000 kipus housed in different collections in museums around the world. However, there are some kipus that have recently been found in archaeological sites, which provides us with context in order to better understand how these elements was used. For example, there's a site called Incahuasi in the Cañete Valley in the south coast of Peru, that tells us about the way the Incas conquered the coast. In that site, kipus have been found in direct relationship with different crops in a storage area. So for instance, the archeologists found kipus related to chili peppers, to beans, and to kinds of peanuts. So then we know that they were totally related to accounting information on their storage facilities. The Inca Empire controlled around 12 million people and provinces and different regions were organized in groups of 50, 100, 500, 1000. Kipus in local provinces, in smaller communities, recorded information and they were then transmitted into a higher hierarchy and then into a higher hierarchy up until it arrived to the chief of the four main regions of the Tahuantinsuyo, which is 
the Inca Empire, and finally to the Inca. How were they used by the Incas and their predecessors? According to the images that we can find in written documents dating to the 17th century, we can interpret them as a device that was used in a quite performative way. So it was displayed and read probably in a public scenario where there were a lot of people and then they were rolled and taken to the other place. It's like a portable archive of information that was used to register different type of information into a database. And then you can have different pages in your main database. Not every one in the Inca Empire was trained to understand, to read, but also to produce a quipu. So the persons that were trained and spent years in training to understand the way they should be done and read were the quipu camayos, the readers of the quipus, the readers of the knots. And they were special people within the Inca Empire with the capability and responsibility of not only producing them, but sharing them. There are many sizes of quipu, very small quipus, huge quipus. There's one quipu, one of the biggest ones, that comes from the region known as Chachapoyas, that it's called the astronomical quipu, because according to specialists, they register a calendar year based upon 28 days each month. Awesome, and how big roughly is that quipu? Like this. Like this. Huge. For me, kipu, the kipu is a very special object because it relates to uh, the organization of a society, such an important society like the Andean societies, but also it addresses the importance and relevance of the raw materials and cottons and camelid fibers, which were key and instrumental in the development of Andean societies. So I feel the kipu is a great object that tells a lot about Andean societies in many ways, but also one of the main objects that have served as an inspiration for modern and contemporary artists. So we have kipus nowadays in different realms of Peruvian society from the kipus that's still being used in highland communities in a more symbolic way, but also in contemporary artworks, reflecting upon their relevance for contemporary societies. I hope you enjoyed uh, learning a bit about the Kipu. If you want to know more, visit the upcoming exhibition at the British Museum. And next week, Nicole, conservator at the BM, will talk us about the way she has prepared and conserved the kipu to be displayed. Mm -hmm.